This action arises from the meeting of two images, Schrodinger's cat and a hermit in a cell. Erwin Schrodinger was an Austrian physicist who first described his now famous cat in 1935 during a correspondence with Albert Einstein. It was designed to reveal an absurd consequence of quantum theory. Rationally, we know from the physics of fundamental particles that there are no fixed objects. Nothing can be measured beyond a certain degree of precision. There are only hazy probabilities. Our actual experience, however, is filled with things which seem to be really there. Schrodinger's thought experiment consists of a cat shut in a box with a vial of cyanide. Also in the box is a small amount of radioactive material which may or may not decay at any moment. There is no way of saying just when the unstable atom will release its electron. If it does, a Geiger counter clicks. This causes a hammer to drop, which smashes the vial. The cyanide gas is then released, and the cat dies. Outside the box, there is no way of knowing whether or not all this has happened. It's impossible to know without opening the box and looking. According to all the equations, the cat is both dead and alive until the act of observation determines that it is one or the other. Or it's neither dead nor alive until looking somehow makes it so. Or perhaps parallel universes split off as soon as the door is closed, populated by live or dead cats, of which ours is one possible one. However detailed the mathematical model or the physical theory, it cannot determine the precise state of the cat. The problem is that the ordinary world of experience, by contrast, seems very clear. Cats are either dead or alive. The experience is key, then. It would seem that the observer is radically implicated in the material world. This fact is quite a shock for a science which for hundreds of years has viewed the world as an object to be analysed and manipulated like a machine, quite separate from the disembodied subjective mind. It suggests a possible future science which pays as much attention to our fears and desires as to our ideas. A science which includes consciousness as an integral part of nature, which feels what it studies, must have implications for our sense of ethical responsibility, embodied awareness and compassion. A science like this begins to look like religion or art. But such names are less important than the actual practice. Vipassana is another name for such a practice. Over the course of the last two and a half thousand years, beginners have traditionally learnt it during ten day periods of relative isolation. It consists simply of calmly observing, without any trace of judgment or interference, phenomena of all kinds as they arise and pass away from moment to moment. McCavity the cat is a quite unruly beast. You would have thought he'd come and play, or purr, or sit at least. After all, another cat in his position would. Not, of course, as though a cat should be completely good. Nonetheless, one does expect a measure of decorum. There are standards of behaviour in the public forum. McCavity, however, refuses to behave. You'll see him slide from step to stair as gentle as a wave, but later, in an empty room, he'll hurtle like a bullet. The truth, you'd think, would be to say, if one could push and pull it, that McCavity, one cat one grants, is a cat of many parts. But this, alas, if I may opine, puts horses before carts. It would be just as true, I think, and better in some ways, for explanation of his lurch from poise to wild nocturnal craze, to say, McCavity's a part of many, many cats. Now, before you ridicule my belfry full of bats, consider, if you will, for me, McCavity the kitten, the result of old Philorum, who by Sheba Ling was smitten. Now, McCavity the mewling ball was soon a little tyke, and before long would run behind as Matilda rode to school by bike. 
in the blink of an eye, it seems, no more. He's a fine figure of a cat, in the twitch of an ear, too, you'll see. He'll be old and blind and fat. And soon, McCavity, the bike chaser, the cause of Maustam's moans, even McCavity with three squared lives will be a bag of bones. Now, in all this stream, this ceaseless flow of effervescent mog, where would you say, Now, stop the film! That's him! Right there, by Gog! You'd be hard put, I'd meekly hint, to find a single place. McCavity, even sitting still, flies by at such a pace. So, you might say there are lots of him, if you excuse a little pedantry. Or even, perhaps none at all. It all comes down to semantry. Now put him in his travel box and return a little later. Be careful not to be too long, he doesn't like a traitor. The cat you find on your return won't be Macavity at all, but a wholly different pussy, probably climbing up the wall. Not as if you'd notice, though, unless you're pretty smart, in which case you probably don't much mind which way you have your horse and cart. It's really quite a problem, though, for those not quite so clever. One wonders where that darned cat is, if he's here at all, or whether there's a clan of clones of him, or one in different guises. Either way, one thing's for sure, he'd win on pets win prizes. This crazy cat, not this or that, might be for us like Moses, a wondrous sleeping tiger under our very noses. Black Magic I will stand, stinking of horses and bulls, a black body in your clean room. I will stand in chains, shaking with the noise of battle still ringing in my bones. I will stand behind and wait, unavoidable, invisible, ready to serve you with nothing. I will be an uncomfortable silence around your table while the food you eat turns to mud. I will be your snigger, your chink, the packy in your galley. I will be the dung in your gallery, the bones of your china, scrutinised, inscrutable. I will be a shadow in your white room, a dark continent in your icy waist. I'll be the bruise on your skin, the black eye like a toad in your milk. I'll be the voodoo doll, all ribbons and earth in your surgeon's sterile theatre. I'll be the first house, the Kaaba, in your cathedral. I will be the lead in your coffers, the alchemist's crucible left burnt and cooling, an embarrassment in Newton's study. I'll be the edge in your plane, the blindness in your wit, your ultraviolet catastrophe, a black spot. I will hold you a prisoner outside the prison you have built while I swim in darkness. <laughs> <laughs>